as near as I can tell here, all our photo etch that was glinting through in places is, is painted over now. I used the uh, uh, light gray here. Well, I guess to us it's the dark gray because the other gray we were using was the sky gray. Uh, anyway, telling you more than you need to know here. Uh, so all our 805 millimeter guns are done. The 650 millimeter guns are done. We can officially start step 59 and we have to make two cranes. And it looks like everything uh, is either on the K sprue or the D photo etch sheet. And um, looking at these right now, oh boy. Um, yeah, they're, they look pretty fragile. But we'll do the best we can here. Anyway, let's find our K sprue and uh, start nipping off some pieces and uh, get ourselves going here. In the comments from yesterday's video, one of the viewers sent us a link to a site that has a lot of absolutely excellent black and white photos taken on the Bismarck. It is though you were able to walk around the deck with a high quality camera and snap photos. Um, and these are the kind of photos that I knew were out there. I knew they had to be somewhere but I just wasn't seeing them. Uh, well, here they are. Uh, back in the uh, late 30s, very early 40s, black and white photography was, you know, it, it didn't get a whole lot better after that. Uh, oh, yeah, cameras got miniaturized a little bit, but as far as the quality and sharpness and so on goes, it really didn't improve. And uh, th these are just absolutely excellent. Now, I don't know how many photos there are there. I didn't count them, but there's a lot. And what you do, if something catches your eye, you click on it, and it'll enlarge on your screen. Then just press Escape to go back to the thumbnails and go to the next one. And you'll notice here that I've uh, brought up the uh, crane. Uh, well, we're going to be working on the crane here uh, once we get our parts nipped. Um, anyway, this is worth seeing. To that viewer... Thank you so much for sending that to us. While I'm thinking about it here, one of my YouTube viewers who has been making comments for a long time now, well, it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, way down south in Louisiana. <laughs> All the best. Hope you had a good day. Okay. Now, let's get some parts nipped. I said parts nipped, not parsnips. Now, speaking of blast bags, like we were talking about blast bags, right? Okay, at least two or three viewers have talked about blast bags. Uh, and... Uh, uh, somebody suggested that I could use epoxy putty to fill in, you know, and, and make it look like, sort of sculpt it to look like a blast bag. Now, my experience has been, when I try to do something like that, it looks really big and clunky and looks worse than if I'd have just left well enough alone. I have a friend who can take a piece of wood and a little whittling knife and he can turn it into something that, you know, like uh, he carves birds and stuff like that. And he is gifted that way. I am almost the opposite to him. I cannot take something and stick it in a hole there and manipulate it around and have it look like a, a blast bag. So I'm just going to leave them. I'm not going to fill in those holes. For some reason, Trumpeter decided not to include blast bags in the kit that would slip over the barrels, you know, and fit in place. Or, nor did they, for whatever reason, mold the, the blast bag on the end of the barrel here. Um, I don't know why they didn't do that. But, uh, yeah, so uh, for those of you who are wondering if I'm going to do anything about the blast bags, uh, in all likelihood... No. 
There are two K sprues, and we're going to be making two cranes. So in all likelihood, we'll be nipping off a, you know, duplicate parts off each sprue. However, I'll just video doing it once. But I'm noticing here, number 21, we got a problem with it. I'll swing it around and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, clearly it's been bent. But what I want you to notice is that right there, where it has been bent, there is a slight, uh, you might say, discoloration. Um, that indicates to me that that is just about ready to break. So I'm going to have to be like super careful when I try to straighten that out. And I think I'm going to try something that I don't recall trying before. And that is I'm going to put just a little tiny wipe of extra thin on it to uh, sort of uh, soften the plastic before I try to bend it. Now I don't want to put too much on. Like a, a drop of extra thin will literally completely turn that into a sprue goo and then I've lost it. Um, I might change my mind here before I actually do it. I don't know yet. Uh, this might be dangerous. What I am presently doing is I am wiping almost all of the extra thin out of the applicator. There's basically only going to be, you might say, <laughs> the smell of the glue there. So I don't want to get very much on. Just a little touch of it. Now before that completely evaporates, see if we can straighten this here very, very gently. Don't want to be snapping it off. It is my opinion that Trumpeter should have made this part a little bit more heavy duty, even though it wouldn't be to scale, because um, you're going to see afterwards that it it has to be fairly strong. I, I think that's somewhat better. It possibly could have come up just a little. Now, as long as I know I'm going to need this anyway, and that was a good time to actually nip it off and get it over with. And these round pieces on the end, they have to come off. That's part of the flashing. Now, I think the best way for us to do this is do it systematically and just sort of start from the left side of the page and just work our way across here. And that way we're not going to be missing anything. And the first one that sort of pops up here is K48, which is right here. Then the next one in line would be K9. Well, that's, that's a pretty obvious one. First of all, let's put this in a safe place. K4, another obvious one. Now I don't want to accidentally be cutting off the cogs. Now we'll move down here, K2 and K3. Okay, now what is sprue and what is part? I think we got that right. Uh, K22 and K45. Well, let's, let's just go down K45. K-45, 
K22. A lot of these are so obvious I don't even have to look for the number. Now, what are we missing now? Move down. Oh, I see what's happening. These these ones down here, they just show you how what it's supposed to look like after you stick it together. Okay, I think we can move over now. K5 and K6. K1. K28, another obvious one. Some of these parts I actually remember seeing on those uh, photographs in that website that I was talking about a few minutes ago. Now, these ones we got. Let's just uh, pause here and see, did we miss anything? Now, as I mentioned, the K21s we already got. Remember, we had to straighten one. And in this section right here, the K49 is the only one we need. We're almost at the end here, K12 and K13. These are little hooks that are going to go on the bottom of the uh, crane somehow. You can see it hanging there. Um, do you remember, oh, it must be a couple of months ago, we tried to do this same sort of thing in Photo Etch, and uh, it, it was just impossible? Okay, well, these are a lot bigger. I think we're probably going to have much better luck here. Here we go. 12, 13. And that is it for right there. Okay, we're going to move over to the end here. Well, let's get this little one here, K8. All right. Now, if you notice here, I'm going to have to be very careful what is sprue and what is part. I do believe that this piece right here is part. I know that this part here is, is sprue. Yeah. When we're doing our trimming, got to be really careful. Got to be careful I'm handling it too. I'm going to be breaking it here. Getting a little bit clumsy with it. I, I think it survived there. Okay, I do believe this is the last of the plastic parts, and it's the largest one. K29. It's, it's not even going to fit in the tray. Well, we tried. I'm going to take the other case sprue now and I'm going to nip absolutely everything off of it because there's nothing left on this one. And we're going to have two more pictures to hang on the wall. 
I am hoping that the weather is going to be good tomorrow. The reason being is I have to go to the hobby store. We are almost out of uh, our two grays. The light gray and the dark gray. Uh, there's really basically just enough in these jars for touch-up work. I don't think I could uh, spray too many parts. Um, after I've spent probably, oh, I'm guessing two hours uh, trimming all the flashing and everything off of these little parts, it's, uh, you know, it's, the day is going to be gone. I don't really have time to go today. I could probably leave right now, but then I'm going to end up possibly driving in the beginning of rush hour traffic, and I don't want to have to do that. But I don't have to. So, uh, thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.